Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Glenmark Life Sciences Limited Q4 FI24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Somi Rao, General Manager, Corporate Communications and CSR. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Neera. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to the earnings call of Glenmark Life Sciences Limited for the quarter ended March 31st, 2024. From Glenmark Life Sciences, today we have with us Dr. Yasser Raoji, our Managing Director and CEO. Our board has approved the results for the quarter ended March 31st, 2024. We have released the same, the same to the stock exchanges and updated it on our website. Please note that the recording and the transcript of this call will be available on the website of the company. Now I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that some of the information shared as part of this call, especially information with respect to our plans and strategies, may contain certain forward-looking statements that involve risks and uncertainties. These statements are based on current expectations, forecasts, and assumptions that are subject to risks which could actually cause results to differ materially from these statements depending upon the economic conditions, government policies, and other incidental factors. Such statements should not be regarded by recipients as a substitute of their own judgment. The company undertakes no obligation to update or revise any forward-looking statement, whether as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise. Our actual results may differ materially from those expressed in or implied by these forward-looking statements. With that, I invite Dr. Yasser Raoji to say a few words. Thank you, and over to you, Dr. Uh, thank you, Shomi. Good evening to everyone and welcome to our Q4 and uh, FI24 earnings call. Uh, financial year 24 marked a significant milestone for the company's history in many ways. I am pleased to announce the completion of our deal with Nirma Limited, who we warmly welcome as our new promoter. Today is our first earnings call following the closure of this transaction. So we've had broad discussions with Nirma um, on the way forward and while our current direction on business would continue, we are working on uh, various uh, new initiatives to drive our growth further, given the increased growth capital available with us. Further, the business with Glenmark Pharma has also been secured by entering into a master supply agreement for a period of five years, beginning 1st of April 2024. So before I go into the details of how we performed, let me share a brief overview of the economy and industry trends that had an impact on business across. Uh, the, the, the economy continues to display remarkable resilience, maintaining steady growth, holding, and a decline in inflation. However, challenges remain, including the worsening geopolitical situation and supply chain disruptions on account of Red Sea. Within our industry, the demand has remained somewhat subdued, overall in FY24, but the situation is improving, particularly in the regulated markets. On the other hand, the continued Red Sea crisis has significantly disrupted global supply chain, affecting the ROW and LATAM markets. The rerouting of shipping vessels not only has delayed shipments, but also inflated costs. This disruption extended to air freight where higher demand and limited capacity caused bottlenecks, subsequently delaying some of our shipments. Despite these delays, we continue to see a strong order book for the quarters to come, but remain cautious about potential ongoing impact. Additionally, our base of Q5, uh, Q4 was high due to very high demand from GPL last year which impacted overall growth for Q4. On a full year basis, we have clocked 5.6% growth. Uh, I would like to assure you that our demand outlook and order book remain very strong. Coming to our regional performance year on year, our regulated market business was predominantly driven by Europe and LATAM, while Japan continued to experience inventory destocking. And our GPL business degrew quite significantly. That said, we are optimistic about recovery in the Japanese market, starting H2, FI25. Our CDMO segment has grown steadily, 
uh, and I've guided earlier, we expect the commercialization of our fourth product in the second half of FI25. Overall, FI24 was a breakthrough year for the company despite geopolitical disruptions. Our gross margins continue to remain strong, and after a one-time bonus adjustment, our employee cost remains one of the most competitive in the industry. As indicated earlier, it will normalize from the upcoming quarter. In terms of our pipeline, we have been aggressively filing across the globe to match our growth aspirations. The total DMF and CEP filings have crossed 520 as of 31st March, uh, with cardiovascular and CNS therapies seeing the highest filings to the tune of 244 in total. During the quarter, we added six new products to our pipeline with four high-potency APIs and two synthetic small molecules. Coming to high-potency API pipeline, we now have 17 APIs with a total addressable market of $37 billion at the front end. We have already validated three products, while four products are in, in advanced stages of development. Additional capacities at Ankleshwar and Behage will be operational from Q1 of FI25. So in closing, we remain optimistic of the growth prospects for FI25. We are committed to delivering high quality, innovative solutions to our customers and enhanced value to our shareholders. With this, I now turn the floor to Mr. Sham Agarwal, who is taking the place of Mr. Tushar Mistri, our CFO, who is not able to be here today uh, due to some personal uh, reasons. So, Sham, I hand over to you. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Yasir, hello and good evening, everyone. I once again welcome you all to our Q4 and FI24 earnings call. Following, following Dr. Yasser's commentary, let me briefly take you through the key performance highlights for the quarter and full year ended 31st March 2024, post which we will open the floor for questions. Our revenue from operation for FI24 stood at Rs. 2,283 crores, a growth of 5.6%. For Q4 FI24, our revenues were at 537 crores. The revenue for the quarter was impacted due to the ongoing geopolitical issues resulting in delayed flight availability for dispatches and also aligning to some extent with Denmark policies. The gross profit for FI24 was at Rs. 1,281 crores, a growth of 11.7%, whereas the growth margin were at, were at 300 basis points and stood at 56.1% in FI24 versus 53.1% in FI23. Gross margins for the quarter were at 55.5%, which expanded 60 basis points year on year. The shift in the product mix and a slight decreased benefits from the PLA scheme impacted our gross margins this quarter. Looking ahead, we anticipate an annual reduction in margins of 100 to 150 basis points due to the discontinuation of PLA scheme's benefits. A beta for FI24 stood at Rs. 686 crores, up 2.2% year on year, with the beta margins remaining steady at 30.1%. I would like to highlight that the adjusted beta for FI24 was at Rs. 727 crores. After considering the one-time bonus and transaction cost of 37.5 crores and Rs. 3.2 crores respectively, which would have got us to us an EBITDA margin of 31.8%. EBITDA for the quarter was at Rs. 145 crores with EBITDA margin at 26.9%. As highlighted in our last earning calls, employee costs have higher due to one-time bonus linked to management's past performance. We anticipate this cost will return to normal levels starting from Q1 FI25. PAT for FI24 stood at 471 crores with PAT margin of 20.6%. PAT for the quarter stood at 98 crores with PAT margin coming at 18.3%. Overall, FI24 has seen steady growth despite the backdrop of uncertainties. Moving on to the segmental performance for FI24, generic API clocked the revenue of 2042 crores, a growth of 7% year on year. Generic API revenues were at 485 crores for Q4 FI24 and was impacted owing to the Red Sea crisis and muted GPL business. Regions like Europe and Latin contributed positively to the segment year on year. CDMO revenues grew by 2% year on year at Rs. 143 crores for FI24 and have continued to show stable demand. Within our therapeutic mix, the CVS and CNS portfolios continue to drive growth. R&D expenditure for FI24 was at 75.3 crores, 3.3 percent of sales, and rupees 20.2 crores for the quarter, which was 3.8 percent of our quarterly sales. Let me quickly touch upon the balance sheet and the cash flow movement, starting with working capital. Working capital for FI24 was at 170 days, slightly on the higher side on account of high inventories we maintained due to 
current geopolitical issues. Our capex for FI24 was Rs. 129 crores. We continue to remain a net debt free company. For FI24, we generated free cash flow of Rs. 285 crores with cash and cash equivalent of Rs. 301 crores as of 31st March 24. Overall, a promising demand environment with our strong order book coupled with fresh capacities puts us in a formidable position for growth in the coming quarters. With that, let us open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The first question is from the land of Tarang from Old Ridge Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, just three questions from my side. Uh, you know, the, you had uh, guided in your Q3 earnings about you know a soft GPL business in Q4. Uh, but the volatility or the fall that we saw was quite steep. Uh, so just wanted to get a sense in terms of going forward, how should we see it? And are these quarterly, can we expect these quarterly aberrations even from your on? So Tarang, uh, the thing is GPS business has been a bit, uh, you know, cyclical because of their demand. Uh, you know, at the front end. Uh, my understanding in terms of why this has been soft uh, or quite, you know, significantly soft, right, was on account of some inventory destocking that they were engaged in. Uh, we expect them to come back in the year, but uh, quarter on quarter, we do expect some, you know, um, fair amount of variation, let's say. On a yearly basis, I think it's going to be fairly stable. Okay, and doctor, generally from your vantage, what kind of visibility do you have on the business? Do you have a, say, six month, two quarter visibility? How does it really work? So typically, uh, we should have about, uh, you know, one to two quarters of visibility on their uh, business, right? Okay, got it. And second, I mean, the CDMO business, I, I believe you spoke about the fourth molecule, which could probably commercialize in Q2 of FI25. Was it Q2 or Q4? Uh, it depends on regulatory approval. I mean, if it comes through soon, then we should expect something in Q2, but it could probably get into H2. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. But... I, I mean, you're roughly at about 140 crores uh, in FI24. I, I understand the long-term plans are strong, but uh, more from a near-term perspective, how should we look at 25, 26 for this business? Yeah, so we should expect the fourth project to kick in sometime in H2. And even the fifth project, right, should kick in by Q4 is our expectation. Uh, okay. you know, so. There should be, there should certainly be some jump, uh, you know, which which we should see towards the end of the of this year. Okay, and uh, uh, iron sucrose pipeline, uh, uh, I think three molecules were in active uh, uh, development. One was filed. Is that status quo, or has there been any change there? At status quo, one molecule uh, has already been filed. It is being reviewed. Uh, by regulators, and then, uh, you know, we've got three molecules in the pipeline, two are in advanced development, one has been recently taken in. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, Tarang. I'll request you to come back for a follow-up question. I request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant and kindly join the queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the land of Shubankar Roja from SK's Capital and Research. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, can you please uh, elaborate on the, uh, the the master agreement that you have signed with GPL? Uh, I mean, uh, what what is the structure, uh, etc. Like, um, 
uh, and uh, i mean basically more color on the same sure so i mean it's a five year agreement right and uh, basically uh, existing supplies would continue uh, and new products that uh, have been filed with our apis okay and these of course would happen at competitive prices um, therefore you know protecting the interests of both the parties by ensuring that you know there is a predictability on supplies as well as on earnings okay great and what was your uh, gpl revenue uh, uh, in the overall revenue for 24 so it was around 7 months about 30% about 30% 717 crores and you expect this to be stable uh, going going forward yeah we expect it to grow in the high single digits high single digits okay yeah. all right all right thank you so much sure. and also sorry i i okay So, so one more actually. So also with respect to the capex, so we have done a major capex for the the hedge and ancillary services. We have to start operation twenty uh, five quarter one. Is that what you say? Yes. What what is our capex um, uh, budget for twenty five? So twenty five, uh, it would be around three hundred and forty crores, uh, because we are starting Sholapur in a big way now. Uh, we expect to spend about 140 crores uh, uh, for the greenfield site in Sholapur this year, and the remaining would be for uh, you know completing uh, many of the brownfield uh, projects that we have undertaken in Ankleshwar and the Hedge, and then of course there is regular maintenance capex and R&D and and uh, quality and so on. All right, great, great and good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A request to all the participants. Please restrict to two questions per participant. Next question is from the line of Neha Manpuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question, uh, Doctor Asif. You you mentioned quite a bit about yeah, how the quarter. Yeah, may I request to speak a little louder, please? Is this better now? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Dr. Yasser, you mentioned quite a bit about how the Red Sea uh, crisis impacted our ROW Latin supplies in the quarter, and it, it seemed like you also remained um, cautious uh, on this, you know, on this scenario going forward. Could you could you give some color on what could have been the likely impact because of this detriment or delayed supplies in in um, you know uh, in the quarter, and uh, are we seeing some easing in the situation or some work around this? um to ensure there are no further delays you know anything that you can uh, you know give us color on sure so what we did not anticipate in last quarter when the problem had just started right I and mean, in the last quarter commentary right is that we didn't expect that the air routes would fill up uh, a lot and the, there'd be a higher demand on the air routes and that is exactly what has hit us so uh, you know there's a pretty you know there's a backlog right uh, because of the higher demand on the air routes right of around 10 to 12 days uh, mm-hmm. and as a result of that uh, you know we we did had you know we we had a problem right with you know completing our entire uh, sales for uh, you know some of the some of the destinations and that is it us now in terms of a work around um, you know obviously you know we'll have to we have to try and sort of anticipate uh you know getting earlier bookings and so on and try to mitigate but i expect that until this crisis uh, you know ends uh, and the uh, sea routes are back uh, air freight's uh, air freight uh, availability will continue to be a challenge plus there would also be some impact on the air freight costs um you know going forward so let's see how it pans out uh, the other impact uh, is also on the raw material supply because that we get by sea mm. and uh, one out of three vessels is actually hitting the western seaports uh, in india so uh, we are trying to do a work around there by trying to see if we can get better uh, availability of uh, you know on the if on the eastern like wise the vishakhapatnam and chennai 
mm-hmm. right, to try and see if we can do something there. And then, of course, we'll have to add a bit of road transport there to, to get our materials in time. Because if we don't do that, then there could be some impact also on holding a little bit extra inventory going forward. Sir, is there a risk to the, you know, usually mid-teen guidance, revenue guidance that we have talked about, you know, because of this, you know, uh, the crisis ongoing? Does that mean that shipments will be, unless this is sorted out and we have very little visibility on that at the moment, uh, you know, we could see lower uh, supplies and therefore lower revenue? Uh, Neha, see, demand is uh, pretty stable, okay, across yeah. markets, except the Japan thing that I had mentioned earlier. Right. Um, so demand is there. Now it's our job to ensure that, you know, given the situation, how do we sort of adjust? Okay. Uh, I am hopeful that, uh, you know, the, that we'll, we'll be able to figure out uh, both the supply side as well as the, uh, uh, you know, sales side, uh, you know, ship, the shipments happen in time so that we are able to recognize the, the sales. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, Neha. I'll request you to come back for a follow-up question. I request to all the participants, please join the queue again for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Ahmed from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, doctor, so we want to understand the, uh, the external business yeah, little sorry better. To interrupt you. Can you please speak through the handset? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have a uh, question on the external business. Uh, so two questions here. First, can you, uh, in the 5% degrowth which we had this quarter, uh, what is the uh, breakup of uh, volume and the price? Uh, how is the volume done and how much is the price decline, YOI? And number two, can you uh, give little more sense on the geography-wise revenue uh, for the external business? How is the e-geography done this quarter? So, Ahmed, the the dip uh, the dip in the external business, right? Like we said, was largely on account of uh, this Red Sea business, plus you know uh, some alignment with the Nirma um, accounting policies. Okay. Uh, with respect to you know volume versus price, uh, see, typically uh, on a year basis, we do see an erosion of around four, four and a half percent on the bucket, right? Um, so, uh, you know, uh, and so there, there is, I mean, to maintain uh, growth, we do have a volume growth of around 10, 11 percent. So, I mean, that's where I would put that. Okay. Coming to geography mix, uh, on the quarter, like we said, Europe and Latin have performed well. The other regions have been relatively flat. Japan has not done well. Okay, uh, but on the year basis, every region except Japan has hit really well. I mean, India did very well, right? The U.S. also did well uh, for the year. Okay, uh, Europe Latin has also done well, and RW has done, uh, has grown, but not, but in single digits, right? And the only deep growth that we have seen is on the uh, on the Japan side. Okay. Uh, second question was on the, uh, the last year actually we had a very strong business both from the GPL as well as the external business and looking at the circumstances in the next couple of quarters uh, do you see uh, some more weakness uh, in the business for next two quarters? Uh, no, we, we have a pretty good order book on the external side uh, and we expect GPL, GPL also to kick back in Right, so we expect the first half of uh, this year to be uh, to have a pretty good growth. Thank you, Emma. I'll request you to come back for a follow-up question. The next question is from Lana of Ashwini Agarwal from the Meteor Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Doctor. Um, uh, and congratulations on completing the transaction. In your know, opening remarks, you said that. You're working on uh, various new initiatives, uh, discussing various new growth initiatives with NIRMA uh, and with more growth capital agreement, uh, with more, more growth capital available to you. Could, you. could you talk a little bit more about that, what areas this might be, and uh, when do you start to see 
the CapEx plans getting outlined and, uh, you know, visibility more on this front? Sure. So, Ashwini, uh, basically, uh, like I said, right, the, the existing um, description that we have adopted for ourselves for growth would continue unimpeded, unhindered. That, that is a pretty solid plan. We will continue that. With respect to, you know, what we can do further, I mean, certainly we will be pushing harder on the CDMO side, okay, uh, with respect to opening up uh, more channels, okay, with respect to the business side. And uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, the technology side, uh, there are a few technologies that would open up, uh, you know, other portfolio opportunities for us. Uh, higher value portfolio opportunities, and those are technologies that uh, we uh, will start investing this year itself. Okay, which should which should sort of start panning out at a commercial level in two to three years time. So we have lined up a couple of them already, uh, and we would be building those out in R and D. And there would be a few more uh, levers that we would add on the technology side. So. Uh, on the business side, it would be, um, you know, um, sort of more extended CDMO play with technologies coming in to assist both the API uh, growth as well as the CDMO. Okay. And just coming to the near term, which is the next one or two years, uh, you alluded to two factors uh, that hindered Q4. One was, of course, the Red Sea and the air freight capacity issue. And the second was alignment with uh, NIRMA policies. Uh, could, you, could you spell out what uh, the latter means, the alignment to NIRMA policies, and how much of revenue got deferred or could not be recognized because of that? Yeah, so in total, it was around 45 crores, okay? Uh, we'd have to come back to you on the split, but, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as, uh, I mean, there's there's got to be a consolidation now with Nirma, right? Uh, you know, so we had to make some small adjustments there, right, in order to align. Okay, and what, what would be the outlook for uh, fiscal 25? I mean, uh, should, should you, you mentioned... Uh, 10 to 11 percent volume growth with 4 to 4.5 percent price erosion, but then there are these new CDMO molecules coming in. So I, I, I'm wondering, you know, what I'm at is it mid teens, early teens, uh, or single digit uh, revenue growth? And on EBITDA, uh, the initial comments suggested a 100 to 150 basis point hit on account of PLI. So net of that, how would you like us to think about uh, profit margins opportunity? Yeah, so on top line, we we will we are holding low to mid teens growth, Ashwini. Right, like I said, right, GPL would give us a high single digit, right, and then our external business is looking robust, so that would continue. Japan would bounce back also, right, and uh, so uh, and as far as EBITDA goes, right, uh, yes, there would be an impact of PLI. Right, and so we can probably hold, uh, you know, around 28 to 30 percent range for uh, the EBITDA. Thank you, uh, Ashwini. I'll request to come back for a follow-up question. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nitesh Tad from Berman Capital Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, I am first going to speak a little louder, please. <laughs> Is this better? Uh, still sounding a little distant. Can you speak through the handset? Sure. So my question uh, is around the PLI uh, that you just answered, Dr. Okay, Yasir. Uh, when will the impact uh, start on our PNL? Oh, right away, because uh, we disengaged with uh, Glenmark, uh, you know, as of March 6th, uh, 2024. So from, I mean, we, we will not be accruing any PLI income uh, from first quarter itself. Understood. Second question is uh, regarding our capacity expansion in FY25, right? So we will be adding another 800 KL. Uh, I just want to understand this uh, breakup uh, between uh, internal consumption uh, in intermediate 
and for uh, final APIs, this 800 KL additional capacity, and also what is our current capacity utilization level? Uh, blended at blended level, if you can uh, give the number. It is. I don't know where you're getting 800 from, huh? But uh, 208 will get added in uh, plant 18 in Ankleshwar, right? And then we are adding around 35 KL uh, in the Pharma area four of plant six in the H. So uh, that will that will be around 250ish KL, right? Uh, if you are referring to Sholapur first phase, that will not be operational in FI25. That will be operational in FI26, and that also towards the latter end. Okay. Uh, so I just Sorry. want to sort of align there. Right. What was the second part that you asked related to capacity? Talking about utilization. Utilization level. Utilization. Yeah. So so the thing is that uh, uh, we expect utilization to start off on the new capacity at around 60-65%, okay, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, in FI-25, and then it would jump, right, in FI-26. Got it. Uh, so finally, uh, from Nirmak's perspective, I just wanted to understand uh, their strategy regarding the business. Uh, uh, if anything has become clearer regarding how they want to uh, take this forward, right? Considering they have uh, other pharma businesses also, so uh, any potential change in uh, business model, etc. Uh, you mentioned about uh, additional growth capital, but other than that, uh, anything from Nirmar side, if uh, if you're able to share at the moment. Uh, my understanding is Nirmar's uh, other pharma businesses would continue to run independently of us, right? Uh, they are largely uh, India-based businesses is what I understand, right? So the overlap with us is hardly there, right? Uh, we, our strategies would be driven purely by CDMO and API, okay? And uh, even the technologies that I mentioned, uh, right, would uh, be driven by us, would uh, basically center around uh, API and CDMO. So there is no, no, uh, clearly, clearly, there is no plan to sort of merge any of the existing Nirma business, uh, pharma businesses, with uh, you know the API, the GLS API business. Thank you, Nitesh. I'll request to come back for a follow-up question. Next question is from the line of Sajal Kapoor, individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, and good afternoon, Dr. Yatra. And as the uh, CDMO projects in relationship with scale of Dr. Yasser, the impact of success uh, as well as the impact of failure will increase, right? So in that context, uh, management bandwidth, senior scientific talent, along with, you know, systems and controls that may be working at small scale where we are today, uh, may not be fit for a uh, purpose as we fight competition uh, and scale up our CDMO services. So. So basically my question is, um, how are we geared up for future? Because if I see it in the Indian landscape, um, there are there are tons of companies in the 100, 200 annual CDMO uh, kind of revenues um, in India today. And not everyone will be successful. I think majority of um, these companies will just stop doing CDMO services because they will struggle to scale up. So how are we um, positioned? Because we have the balance sheet um, to support growth, but do we have the intent and the strategy in place? Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, if you were following the answer to Ashwini that I just gave a few minutes ago, right? Uh, so let, well, let me take you to where we are on CDMO now, okay? So our focus on CDMO thus far has been on life cycle management, right of uh, in end of life cycle plus speciality now with respect to attrition in that uh, space uh, the attrition is not that high so uh, typically our strike rate you know on landing projects is about 40 to 50 percent okay so currently we've got a pretty healthy uh, uh, you know set of uh, RFIs uh, uh, you know getting into RFQs and then later into project uh, realization, right? And we expect that that 40 to 50% uh, attrition is all that we will be hit with, right? 
the bandwidth also uh, that we require to close these projects and make them successful uh, is available to us now. But then going back to uh, you know the question that Ashwini asked in terms of what are the further investments, I mentioned that we would be opening up some more channels, uh, you know, with some further investment. Now that may require, uh, you know, investments both at the front end as well as and definitely at the technology end. But that would be an additional uh, lever, so to speak, on the CDMO side. Okay, so while this push on CDMO is something the, the one with speciality and end of life cycle uh, is part of our current strategy and that would continue with a uh, with a fairly modest attrition right uh, and with the bandwidth available for us to deliver okay we we believe that uh, you know by further opening up channels we will only accelerate our CDMO play uh, of course, I mean, you know, you do reference other companies. Uh, I think everything relates to how a company approaches CDMO and basically what what slice of the CDMO uh, piece are people looking at. So if you're in the early medicinal chemistry, uh, you know, uh, lab type of projects, yeah, you have a larger number of projects, but like you mentioned yourself, that attrition can be pretty high. So again, we are clear. Right, attrition in our set of products is uh, projects is uh, pretty modest, and uh, we expect a fairly uh, good hit rate, you know, with respect to CDM space. So, so do we have the aspiration to hit uh, a number close to thousand crores coming from custom synthesis of CDMO? I mean, is that what our vision or strategy is over the medium term to try and get closer to that number because 100 200 crore i think is 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 sub scale and it would be difficult to survive for any player uh, at that level for for very long standalone so, is this kind of yeah yeah on a standalone basis yes uh, what you're saying makes a lot of sense but you you've got to factor in that our 150 crores revenue is driven by only three projects okay so they are sizable. At a per project level, they are sizable. So for us to add, let's say, you know, another eight to ten projects in the next four years would drive up our revenue to about five, six hundred crore is what we had indicated anyway. Right? So that direction is clear. The size of our portfolio allows us to, you know, say that with confidence, right, that we will achieve that. Uh, however, right, uh, you know, adding another lever or a column, so to speak, on the CDMO, which we will choose carefully. Again, keeping in mind that we don't want to get into this very high attrition business. Plus, uh, you know, uh, we don't want to be making very significant investments in a completely different set of, uh, you know, uh, capabilities and technologies. We we should we should you know aim for a thousand crore uh, i'm not putting out anything i mean but just to since you put that number out there if we add a little more uh, you know more levers on the cdmo side we we can aspire we can aspire for a thousand crore thank you very much sajan sorry to interrupt you kindly come back in the question queue for a follow up question a request to all the participants as we have a long question queue and the part and the management is able to answer all the participants in the queue kindly restrict to two questions per participant next question is from the line of hs lakhani from unify capital please go ahead thank you uh, sir a follow up on some of the earlier discussion on freight should we assume that um, although there are challenges given the limitations on air freight availability um, but the fact that you have uh, awareness of the problem and op options that uh, you're exploring uh, across different lines and different modes, uh, what what probability should we ascribe to that being a constraint to actually getting it done? So, Sharad, thanks for the question. But, uh... I think it remains to be seen. We'll have to figure this out. Uh, it doesn't look like a showstopper for sure. Okay, I mean, uh, it, 
add to some cost and even that cost would be very minimal uh, okay but the more important issue is timing okay so let me break it up again right uh, on the raw material side right like i said all our raw materials come to the western coast uh, the gujarat or you know mumbai okay if that begins to be a challenge right going forward then it will only uh, it mean that we will we will stock up some inventory uh, you know um, maybe an extra 10 to 15 days on the inventory side okay which will impact working capital uh, i think that's easily manageable because our supply base is largely from china and india some european supplies we'll have to figure out uh, how we manage those but again not a challenge right where i think we need to do a bit of work is try to figure out in terms of you know how we we continue to get the full benefit of our you know three month manufacturing cycle right and translate that to uh, basically making sure that the customers get the material you know in time and we can recognize the sales so that that part will uh, We'll have to figure out. The good thing for us is that our business is pretty distributed across the world. So all it means for us is, in certain challenging regions, we would have to, we would have to uh, basically prioritize uh, manufacturing for those for those regions, right? And therefore recognize the, you know, be able to recognize the sales comfortably. But it takes some adjustment. We're working on it. Okay. And um, there was also a discussion, but I'm just asking the same to try and understand whether I got it clearly. The question was on Nirma's uh, influence on the company's business plans. Uh, did I understand you saying effectively that um, what Nirma has going on is largely domestic and that will be continued uh, by them independently and effectively what you have in mind and what you've been explaining to shareholders as your business plan uh, has little or no uh, change with the new promoter coming in. Is that a fair understanding? Yes, it's a it's a it's a complete it's a fair understanding. You're you're spot on. Okay. Thank you. Best wishes. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet Pujara from Helios Capital Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. I hope I'm audible. Yes. Yeah, so if I look at the future capacity expansion plan size slide that you put out, and if I look at that for Q3 presentation, we are expecting to add 258 kiloliters of capacity in FY24. I understand that... Uh, uh, much of it will be commercialized in one key of FY25, which is unclear we are getting 208 KL out of that. But still remaining some 590 odd kiloliters will be adding as per the current slide in the future capacity expansion plan. So could you just provide some color where these capacities are getting added? Sure. So largely the, uh, the bulk of this 500 odd KL would be, com will be coming up at Sholapur. And like I said earlier, this will be coming up in late of late FY26. Uh, there would be some additional capacity that we may look at in the H on the on the pharma area, right? In case we run into some bottleneck, because that civil construction is already done. Okay, uh, but that we'll see how that pans out. Uh, and then there is the sort of completion of uh, plant six in. Uh, the H that should also give us an additional 100, 120 KL of capacity. But again, um, I expect that that would come online only in mid 2026. But see, our strategy has always been to be calibrated on our capacity expansion. So while you know we do the early work like civil construction and stuff, which adds a lot of, which takes up a lot of time, we do that quickly you know with very little investment right the bigger part of you know the investment which is the fit out and the uh, the whole you know hvac the air handling systems and all that right uh, and that takes less time we do that closer to when we see that we need that capacity so that's the plan we'll see 
how it goes, right? I am not saying that we will bring everything online. Uh, you know, at the same time, we'll go step by step. This 250-ish KL will come in QI, uh, Q1 of uh, FI25. And, uh, you know, the, the rest will, you know, will will we'll chug along, right? So, so, so these are more like very hard numbers. These are depending on certain business development visibility, certain decisions to be taken up by the management. These are not like hard guidance numbers. Is that right way to think? Yes, yes, exactly. Because the thing is, the see, again, if, if the business is there, it will come on. And we can bring it on, you know, in about five to six months, right? But, uh, you know, if we don't need the capacity and we can service the business, uh, you know, with the existing capacity, then why why spend the money? Fair enough. Um, yeah, thanks. That answers the question. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv from Fluent Aura Enterprises. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you that uh, in the presentation that was being provided, uh, I could see that the solar, uh, has there been any plant capacity decrease in Solapur and Village from 1,000 to 600 kilolitres and 220 to 100 kilolitres, respectively? Okay, Dhruv, uh, the age 220 KL is now broken up, right? So we're adding 35 now, right? We may end up adding another 35 this year on the pharma area. Right, and then like I said, around 120 KL uh, could come up. So that gets us to that 220 number that you're referring to, right? Okay, mm -hmm. and Sholapur uh, is, is something that, you know, we will do in two phases. The fa first phase uh, should come through by FY26 end, okay, which will basically allow us to uh, take validation batches to go for, uh, you know, trigger an inspection. Okay. And then we'll see how that builds out, whether we need, you know, 400 or more capacity is something that will depend on the the product mix, right, and what we are planning to build up in Shalapur. So just to go to the previous, uh, you know, Mr. Puneet Pajara's uh, question, right, we, we basically are going to play it by ear. Uh, and the second question comes from, like, so the one-time bonus impact of employee expenses. Can you share some, uh, some light on that and the future trajectory for this one? Uh, yeah, so on the one-time bonuses, the company has uh, been performing very consistently over the last few years, right? And there has been a, there was a plan to, sort of, uh, you know, uh, award these bonuses to the top management, which was done in the last year. Uh, now, that is not something that would continue, so our manpower cost would regularize in FI25 uh, back to more normal levels, right? Uh, that's, the, that's how it would be going forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sadan Singh from Green Portfolio PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, sir. I have a couple of questions. Sir, uh, first, I just want to touch back on the red sea crisis issue. You, but your voice yeah. is coming very distorted. Can you please speak through the handset? Yes. Hello. Yeah, sir. I just want to touch back on the red sea crisis issue. Uh, could you share your insight on the expected trajectory of freight cost in Q1 FY25? Will they remain elevated or are there potential factors that could lead to a decrease in the cost? What do you think, sir? So, look, uh, costs have gone up, both sea freight as well as air freight. Okay. Air freight is a blowback because of sea freight uh, unavailability. Uh, right, and the timing problem. So both have gone up. Uh, luckily for us, our volumes are not that that high. So even with the higher rates, right, uh, 
there will be some impact also i mean you know if it continues over the year you know maybe 10 12 crores in fact if it doubles the so seat rate the uh, rate the freight rates okay but uh, i don't expect that this crisis will continue for a year so overall when you sort of dial in both maybe in, let's say another 3 months if this matter is sorted out then things should come back to normal okay okay and my second question is regard to your r&d pipeline sir are there any specific upcoming filings or approvals you would like to highlight and also about their uh, impact on your future revenue stream so a high potent uh, pipeline is building up very nicely right we've got around 16 molecules now right that we taken into the pipeline okay uh with respect to revenue coming from this uh, we already will get one product commercialized in some select markets right which is really nice because we didn't expect that but it has already begun but uh, the large part of the revenue build up on uh, this high potent pipeline would start uh, uh, about 2 years from now so there would be a significant addition uh in about 2 years time on account of this uh, high potent pipeline thank you so now i'll request to come back for a follow up question the next question is from lanap tarang from old bridge please go ahead hi uh doctor just uh, on the red sea impact just wanted to check i mean did the uh, impact uh, you know have a bearing on your sales target or it was really a cost push number one number two if it did impact your sales are we looking at deferral or are we looking at permanent loss and number three if it is a loss i mean i mean strategically it doesn't hurt you in terms of really losing market share with your uh, end customer for not being able to supply material so tarang see right it it's a sales loss right it's a deferral really i mean you know it is going into the next quarter okay and but we didn't anticipate that air freight would have such a big backlog okay it's the air freight backlog that has caused this deferral on the sales that's the thing and as far as customers go i mean if there is a delay of 10 12 days the customer really doesn't get impacted right but we have cut off dates and we have to recognize the sales you know in the quarter so that is obviously hit us right call and call frankly frankly it it did it did take us by surprise but the manufacturing schedules were already in place so while we were trying to do our best to sort of get it in quickly right it is what it is right i mean it it kind sure. of hit us there you know sure sure and uh, i mean in terms of cost implications you did sound out a 10 to 12 crore number for the year so that, that is if it continues for an entire year okay yeah sure okay so well, thank you thank you doctor sure sure thank you the next follow up question is from the line of ahmed from unify capital please go ahead Uh, just want to reconfirm a number you said 45 crore impact uh, because of deferment and a uh, change in accounting policy is that correct yeah uh, can you break it down uh, deferment and change in policy like i said we'll have to come back on that okay fine thank you thank you the next follow up question is from the line of puneet pujara from helios capital please go ahead yeah thanks for the follow up now that the year is closed uh, could you tell us that what percentage of your revenue came from goods that were made using inputs from like imported goods at any stage that's one and follow up to that would be what percentage of inputs came from china for that Could you please repeat that I, i kind of lost you yeah yeah sure so what i'm asking what percentage of your financial year 24 revenue came from the goods that were manufactured using the materials imported outside in, from outside india and within that what was china share okay so you know what tying up what gets 
made because of China and what gets made because of other imports is difficult because there are all kinds of inputs that go into a single product. Hmm. I mean, if you're looking at a seven-stage synthesis, right? There are multiple key starting materials and uh, common raw materials that come from China, India, Europe. So that's difficult to quantify. But mm -hmm. let me tell you, right? Uh, our import procurement, right, is about 40 to 45 percent, right? And uh, China is about uh, about 48 percent, right? Uh, and the rest of it comes from India. And this is expected to come down with uh, backward integration capacities such as Ankleshwar coming up. Uh, sure, Apu, yes. It's expected to come down. Sure. And the second thing is you mentioned to my earlier question that you can put up capacities in, let's say, roughly six months of time upon getting business visibility. But given that the Red Sea crisis is also would impact the inbound shipment as well, so what, like, how will that ensure the import of machineries or engineers coming to set up those plants, how will that, uh, how will that timeline change? Okay, so for CapEx, for capacity building, we don't get outside, uh, we, everything is done out of India. So all our suppliers are based out of India. Our entire infrastructure, there is no infrastructure development dependence on uh, any foreign country. Everything is indigenous. Okay, so that's not a problem. I see. Okay. Sure, that answers my question and fall back in. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from the land of Dinesh from Vito Capital Management. Please go ahead. Thank you. I have two questions. I just want to confirm the Glenmark uh, business, API business, will grow Dinesh high single digit. Muffled. Hello, is it better now? A little bit. Okay, so two questions. First, I just want to confirm my understanding that what you said is that Denmark business for the full year will grow in high single digit based on your current outlook uh, from the FY24 base, right? Yes. Okay, and second, I just want to understand the accounting policy that you reconciled. What was the policy earlier? What is the policy now? Yeah, so I mean, Nirma follows a certain pattern, right? So we we have aligned completely with that pattern, right? Uh, we'll have to give you details uh, not in this call, right? We'll okay, we'll take it, right? take it later. Okay, thank you. Related to the consolidation. Yeah, I want to understand the policy change because yes. Nirma, so being a large company, I expect policies to be best in class. So what, you know. Is there a change in the way you record, report, record revenues, revenue recognition policies materially different? Yeah, so like I said, we'll have to come back to you, Dirish, on that. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as the last question. On behalf of Glenmark Life Sciences Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.